Susanoo in Record of Ragnarok is very different to pretty much all the other gods fighting in the tournament, whether it be his motive for participating, his flashback or honestly character as a whole. Today I'll be breaking down his entire story before the current tournament, the entire flashback of Susanoo, giving us context for how he was able to gain his monstrous power, how he became known as the strongest god slayer, and how one blessed with power was able to improve thanks to humans. The evolution of Susano the Sword God to something far beyond that. To begin, it seems like the placement of his flashback is going to be very important for the continuation of this fight. Currently in the clash between Susano and Okita, the small sword demon was able to land this deadly blow, put him currently in the lead of the fight, and showing pretty much everyone watching the tournament that this boy is indeed the strongest manslayer, the one viewed as the greatest swordsman in all of humanity. That's what's been provided at various points since the beginning of this fight. All the setup for Akita being so monstrous is due to his life, the era he was alive was pretty much the era of swordsmanship, an era where every day was pretty much life or death battles with the sword. That's Okita's story, alongside him never getting the opportunity to go all out in a fight due to him dying young thanks to an illness. Now he's demonstrating what he's truly capable of and honestly showing his superiority over Susanoo. However, I believe that is about to change sometime. The rise of Susanoo is about to begin. Brynhilda is unlike everyone else, telling them not to celebrate due to her knowing the story of Susanoo as the god who knows about the greatness of humanity better than everyone else. Therefore, his flashback begins with revealing to us that Susanoo is the founder of the sword, he is in fact the sword god, but he is not the founder of swordsmanship, this is in fact humanity. We originally learn that Susano, the creation of him, the birth of him you could say, was at the highest ranking noble god in Japanese mythology, someone who was viewed as perfect or flawless it said here, alongside his siblings as well. Which of course means he was born with power unlike any other. So much so, at this point he was able to cut down all the evil gods and spirits with a single slash of his sword. Meaning, Susano became known as the strongest god slayer without having the knowledge of swordsmanship, this raw power to just defeat people with a single slash, no skill really being involved, highlighting how built different the creation of Susano truly was, which most likely resulted in some type of boredom as well, never getting a challenge that he truly desired, until this happened. The pretty much creation god in Japanese mythology, Izanagi, sent Susano to pretty much rule over the human realm, Earth, and this is where he became a hero, a legend to the humans, due to him destroying the Hydra beast Orochi, and of course demonstrating that someone fairly small with a sword is capable of defeating a monster like that, giving humans the idea of doing a similar thing, but of course not having the innate power, the monstrous power just to defeat something like that with a single blow, they need something else. That's where humanity created swordsmanship. Which eventually Susanoo got to see firsthand, being shocked by the might of it and being very interested in how the villagers were able to train and create this I guess evolution to what Susanoo is known as. So much so that he claims that humans are amazing and actually begs them to teach him swordsmanship. Something to pretty much every other god in the series would be completely out of the question for them to even think something like this. The first stage of why Susanoo is different to any other, but it gets even more extreme. Yes, he became the first god to seek guidance from humans, but he also proceeded to return to the Japanese realm of the gods and request to his older sister his want to learn swordsmanship from humans. The sword god wanting to learn 
sword stuff from humans. Yes, that's what he requested to his older sister, which naturally has the reaction most of the gods would have to the situation. This disgrace in the gods, how someone at his noble status should be far above this, let alone a regular god already being above that, especially someone like Susno, who was born as perfect, flawless, etc., leaving them pretty much stunned. But Susno is dead serious about this, willing to do pretty much everything, beginning with him resigning as one of the three noble gods in Japanese mythology, and then making the following deal with his sister to achieve what he wants. First, he can never return to the Japanese realm of the gods. His punishment is eternal exile, which he agrees with straight away, no questions at all. And the second requirement is that he can't directly get instructions from the humans in learning swordsmanship. He can only learn from them via watching. And that's what Susnor has been doing since this moment. Throughout all of time, he's been watching the various generations of swordsmen, learning from them while being disguised as this bird, which it looks like he can transform into. A subtle ability Susnor, I guess, has. I don't believe this is going to be relevant to the fight itself. Probably something a lot of gods can typically do when entering the human realm due to them, of course, not wanting humans to see them as an example. Some of the things we get to see Susnor see is, of course, the Crusaders, the battle between Sasaki and Masashi Miyamoto, which is very important for the context of the Reko Ragnarok story, and Susnor considering Okita the strongest swordsman, even if he saw Masashi what he was capable of, but of course he probably didn't know someone like Sasaki Kodro and proved so much after death, how he pretty much perfected himself after death, something unique to him so far in the tournament. However, the true importance of this flashback outside of him just training alongside Okita here, of course, Akita doesn't know he's there, doesn't know he's doing that. That's what Susno has been doing with pretty much every major swordsman. That's how he was able to learn every style, perfecting them and potentially mastering them to a higher degree than the humans themselves, thanks to his divine body, him being born as perfect, the sword god now being perfect at swordsmanship. Susnor has been training potentially longer than any other god in the series, alongside him at the creation of him being perfect already, which is crazy to think about. In the previous fight, we had Apollo, who was shown to be a god who trained, so much so that he became a god of many things, until eventually being recognized as the sun god. But a main point about Apollo is that he was born weak compared to the other Greek gods, needing to train to get that power and potentially surpass most of them. Sushno on the other hand was born perfect and flawless, but decided to give up pretty much his nobility, his godhood to a degree, to learn from humanity and pretty much train and get stronger for pretty much as long as time has been at this point, which is crazy to think about, really highlighting how different Susno is to pretty much every other god, which does beg the question of why he's participating in this tournament, a tournament that's set up to pretty much destroy humanity, something he very clearly loves dearly. That's of course due to something more powerful than his respect for humanity, his want for a battle as well, him wanting to face the one he views as the strongest swordsman, Okita. That's why he's in this tournament, for his own selfish desire. Something that we could kind of see glimpses of at the start, him being bored, him seeing something that could potentially give him that challenge, and then waiting for his moment, which is now. That's why he's a fighter, of course alongside him being incredibly strong, and Zeus probably recognizing that, and choosing him as a fighter as well. And of course, probably being the strongest Japanese god at this point. So, crazy stuff. With the chapter concluding, as we see Susno pull out, I guess, this new style, and looking a little crazy as well. Additionally, something funny about the extra parts of this chapter is we got to see Apollo once again. Interesting considering the somewhat similarities between him and Susno when it comes to their flashback and training. And in the previous month's chapter, the extra part of that, 
we got to see the pretty much protagonist of Okita Suji's story, the manga what he's from, with him being jealous of Okita participating in the tournament rather than him, and him being recognised as the strongest swordsman by someone like Brunhilde over him, which is interesting as well. I'm still excited for him to join the other Shinsugumi as well, but we'll have to wait and see for that. But that's really everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Shout out to the members, the Mad Lads, these guys here, absolute legends. But that's it guys. Peace.